from ESPN, Aaron Rodgers. There was no relaxer last night. No baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Our first victory show of the season. Niners beat down the New York Jets 32 to 19. Wasn't even that close. They had the ball for 38 minutes and 40 seconds. J.P. Mason, his first start ever as a member of the San Francisco 49ers, first start of his NFL career. Of course, he's spent his entire career with the 49ers. Runs for a buck 47, third most yards rushing in a player's first start in 49ers franchise history. Uh, I mean, Kevin Barlow's on this list. Carlos Hyde is on this list. J.P. Mason, it was his game. The offensive line was absolutely special. Pooney's a guy. He's a legit right guard. Uh, Trent Williams is back. He did a lot with pressure, so the line did their job. Both sides of the line of scrimmage. I thought the defensive line was really good yesterday. Offensive line was really good. They controlled the trenches, and they physically whipped the New York Jets. Physically whipped them. Uh, and now we move on to Minnesota. We will later in the week, but... What a win yesterday, Shaska, to start the season. All the noise that we talked about. Super Bowl hangover, hold ins, hold outs, the Pearsaw situation. What's going on with Shanahan and Lynch? What's going on at practice? You got to cancel scrimmages. Baldy had never heard of a thing like that. And all that gets washed away by just one dominant victory. And what's the Niners didn't even play their A game? They didn't no, even play their A game, Shasky. No, they didn't, but I think that that is indicative. Again, I said this earlier, but on a night where you're honoring Frank Gore, that was really a Frank Gore-like game. You know, it was a workman-like, just get the victory, suffocate the opponent, out-hit them. Little tiny subtle movements by Jordan Mason to evade uh, tackles and whatnot, yep. using great feet and... I just I thought that the Niners were comprehensively very good yesterday. Yeah. Wasn't their best performance. But the other thing I keep coming back to, I don't want them clicking early in the season. No. They did that last year. I, I felt like they were humming on all cylinders to start the year last year. And looking back on it, I think they were doing it a little prematurely. I want them to hum on all cylinders come December. That's when I want it. So I'll take a victory. I don't scoff at it. But you know the Niners are good. When we're out here dissecting wins. Yeah, you know, last year they opened the season 5-0. and They go on a three-game losing streak, and they didn't get the number one seed. Um, the year before, they trade for Christian McCaffrey after a slow start. They get to 4-4 four and four before the bye week, and next year, you know, they're the NFC Championship game and hosting a divisional round playoff game against the Dallas Cowboys. But one thing about this team that we, we underestimate, we look at their starters, right? Well, outside of Dominic Pudi, their entire offensive line is back. Mm. Banks, Williams, Brendel. McKivitz, and now you add in Pooney. And then you have Burford and Gutierrez as, or excuse me, Burford and Feliciano as backups. You're going to be fine there. Your wide receivers are back. Debo and uh, Brendan. Hell, your top three wide receivers are back. Jawan Jennings, Brendan Ayuk, and of course, Debo Samuel. Your backfield's back with Christian McCaffrey and Kyle Juszczyk. But you know what? No McCaffrey, you just saw in Jordan Mason. So you're not missing. You got two new starters yesterday on the offensive side of the football. Continuity. Then you look at defense. Okay, you bring in uh, Malik Collins over from Houston, Texas, but Litter Floyd, you bring in as a free agent signing, a very underrated free agent signing, but Buster Hargrave are back. Fred Warner's back. Diablo Lenore is back. Traverius Ward is back. Tig Brown has a lot of experience. The experience he gained last year, kind of like Drake Greelaw, his rookie year, where Drake Greelaw was thrust into action due to Quad Alexander getting hurt, but all that experience he was able to receive his rookie season catapulted him to another level. Now he's an all pro, right? Same thing could be happening for Tig Brown as he's thrust into a role last year for Hufanga at the safety position. All of a sudden, he's got experience, and boom, he's got an interception against Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, and he's picked up where he left off. The continuity on this football team was on full display yesterday. They have so much damn experience, that noise doesn't even matter. When they lock in, they're one of the best teams in football, Shasky. That's what we're dealing with here in San Francisco. They are, and they're going to get more reinforcements at some point. And <laughs> CMC, we don't know, right? So that's a big question mark, and, and it's a huge element of the team. So let's put him to the side because you just literally do not know about that. Ricky Pearsall is going to come back, and I think that they're going to need him. They're going to need another guy who can get open. Uh, again, we're only talking like a B.A. just got paid $30 right. million, dollars and he got like three or four targets. Right. Okay, so it's not like they're going to target him seven, eight, nine ten times in a game, but there's going to be a point in time as the season wears on where you're going to need him, and there's going to be a game where you're throwing from behind, and guys that can get open and get separation are difficult to find. Right. And if he can be one of those guys, I would love to see it. Well, I'm looking at the snap count for the wide receivers yesterday. How right? did Ronnie Bell end up So, with? Debo Samuel, 53 snaps. Wow. Brendan Ayuk, 43 snaps. 
uh, 60% of the staffs were Ayuk, 74% of the staffs were Debo, 49% of the staffs were Jawad Jennings. He played 35 snaps, wow. nearly half the snaps. Chris Conley, 40% of the snaps, 29 snaps. Ronnie Bell, 13 snaps, which is 18% of the snaps. And Jacob Cowan didn't hit the field on offense, uh, surprisingly, yesterday. George Kittle, 66 snaps, 92% of the snaps. Eric Saubert only played 19 snaps in that 12 personnel, but 26% of the snaps for him. Uh, Kyle Juszczyk, he played 56% of the snaps. He played 40 snaps at the yeah. fullback position. And so you got Jordan Mason basically taking up the bulk of the carries uh, on offense there. So defensively, this is a little surprising. Devontae Campbell played every single snap alongside Fred Warner. Played every single snap. De- Demetrius Flanagan get fouls in that 4-3 system uh, in their base 4-3 package. Played 12 snaps yesterday. 12 snaps. So you got a lot of continuity on this yep. football team, man. A lot of continuity. And then three quarters, that's it. I'm actually surprised that Renardo Green didn't play defense or Rock, Rocky Sid. But it was basically Isaac uh, Yidham, right? Isaac Yidham? Yadam. Yadam. Isaac Yadam. No, it's Sir right. Isaac Yankum. Isaac Yadam. That was WWE. You don't, <laughs> Isaac Yadam. You know, he was a dentist. 39 snaps. So. He just passed away. Psycho Sid. Oh. Um, you yeah, know, Psycho be, Sid just passed away? Yeah, I thought it happened maybe like a month ago. I'm really? Kidding, yeah. Sid, Sid Vicious? Yeah, Psycho Sid. Yeah, yeah he, was, he was something else. Yeah, he was. Um, I have PTSD. Jacob Cowing looked good back there as a returner. Every single time right. a punt goes in the air and we have a punt returner back there, whether it's Kyle Williams, Ray Ray McLeod, I just, in my mind, for the rest of my life as a 49er oh, fan, just catch, it, just catch 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 it. You don't do that? No. Not, no. Oh, I I'm not worried. alone on that. I, I no don't. way am I, I alone don't. on I'm, that. I'm not, no, no I'm, you're not alone on it. No way. But I'm not going to watch, I don't watch every single punt. It's like, I only react if they drop it. Be, Give when, me a reason to react to you. It bothers me. I hear you, though. I hear it. I hear you. All big moments with the 49er punt return comes down to just catch the ball. I honestly am so triggered by the whole thing. In certain situations, I wouldn't even put someone back there. You think I'm joking? No, I know you're not joking. That's why I'm laughing. Oh, you got to stop. Just get the ball back. I <laughs> no, I hear you, man. I hear you. I, I hear you. I, 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 no, not, I hear you. I'm not even trying to be that I guy, but it's like, dude, all these big moments, it's like the kick returner or the punt returner, it's like, just catch the ball. Just catch it. Just catch it. Just catch well, it. Kyle did a great job catching the ball yesterday. No, he did. But I'm yeah. saying, like, it, when the ball's in the air and I'm in the end zone, the whole time I'm going, catch it, catch it, catch it, catch it. Oh, I'm, good. He caught it. I give. I Go I'm, down. I'm kind of with uh, G. Martinez here on YouTube. G. Martinez. Can we get him getting my benefit of the doubt? Till further notice. And I'm with them there. I'm with them. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt until you give me a reason not to. Kyle Williams gave me a reason not to. Ray Ward McLeod at times gave me a reason not to. I mean, Jacob Cowing so far is perfect. Uh-huh. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt until a fumble happens or a muff happens. And then I will assess the situation from that point. But yeah, for now, I mean, for now it's a new guy. Yeah. New guy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm not going to be fearful of a guy fumbling in his first football game. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, respect to James Earl Jones, by oh, the way. Rest in peace to him Can you give well. me 10 seconds on this? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, James Earl Jones, <laughs> the greatest villain in television or cinema, um, the voice of Darth Vader. Like, it's one of the most iconic villains ever, period. He's a top three villain for everyone, what, what right? What would he be remembered for? Bonte. What movie? No, Is this Star Wars? The, the great ones are remembered for all of them, right? Yeah. Because obviously his contribution in Sandlot is next level. I mean, it's incredible. Oh, to America. George gave you that. Well, I've got the entire 27 right. Yankees. Like he was amazing in that. And then him coming to this, America, coming to America is a classic as the dad. And then my other favorite one is, you know, feel the dreams, which yeah. I watch back and I cry now because I think of my dad. But when he's talking about how baseball's lived on forever, that two minute soliloquy, He's one of the greatest. Mustafa in yeah. Lion King for younger yeah. people. My brother yeah. was Fossa. a big Lion King Mufasa. fan growing up. Yeah. You know, James Earl Jones, for people of our age and a little bit younger and a little bit older, I mean, he, to say he's an iconic actor and voice and presence is an understatement. The guy is an absolute legend. He'll live on icon. forever. And I just, man, what a life he lived. And, yeah. a, and a champion of sport and a champion of laughs. Yeah, no, he he was awesome in a lot of movies. I think he played Jack Johnson uh, in an old school movie back in the day. Uh, back in the day, one of the first movies I saw with him in it 
Uh, he's been around for so long. I mean, he's been making movies since the 60s, for crying out loud. Best smile ever. <laughs> I mean, it's the most iconic voice in the history so. of cinema. I think like, so. Like, it's not even close Luke, to me. Luke, I, I am your so. father. It's one of the, he is the all-time villain in the history of movies. Uh, Luke, I am your father. Where did, like, of lines in a movie, in a movie, like, it's a top ten line, right? I find your lack of faith disturbing. All-time, dog. All-time. Nice. Luke, I it's. I mean, it's I mean, one it of the greatest. Down your spine. That's no. just one of the great voices ever. Uh, ever. Nah, he is. He does have one of the, one, the best voices ever. Uh, shout out to James Earl Jones. James they Earl come, Jones also Ray. read a book on KQED. No doubt about it. He's in him into so many movies. Um, let's go back to the lines. Daryl in Oakland. Daryl, what's happening? What's up, Daryl? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, 